I was told, as a number of people have been there a long time, that uh, as is happening in a lot of newspapers and other media, they just had to make cuts. And um, I was stunned, to say the least. But then what happened was one of the best things that ever happened to me. I don't think many people are able to read their obituaries while they're still alive. And I was amazed that there was that much interest. Uh, I was interviewed on National Public Radio, and in the New York Times, to my surprise, Clyde Haberman, who was then a regular columnist, did almost a full page interview. And I was just amazed that that many people cared that I was fired. Then I went back. I asked to go back. Uh, I'm not on staff. There's no medical plan for me. But one of my passions is education. And from my point of view, with some exceptions, mainly in the New York tabloids, who have very good reporters, the degradation of the school system here under Michael Bloomberg has been such that I wanted to write about it. So I do it once a month. There's a fellow named Tim Lynch here, who's a very active uh, member at the Cato Institute, and we'd known each other for some years, and he's a civil libertarian, as am I, and we would cooperate on finding out about different stories, etc. And I knew that the Cato Institute was involved very strongly in individual liberties. How could you call yourself a libertarian organization and mean it and not be part of it? But I was surprised when Ed Crane, the man who's in charge, called and offered me this, this position. I'm very happy to be here. I feel like, a, if I may say so, part of the family. <laughs> <laughs>